if she'd change at all if her hair was still red. Her folks, they set our lives together. Sure was gonna be rough. They never did like mama's homemade dress. Papa's banquet wasn't big enough. And I was standing on the side of the road, rain falling on my shoes. Heading out for the East Coast. Lord knows I paid some dues. Getting through. Tangled up in blue. We're doing orange and blues for the Southern Fried Sports playlist theme of the day in honor of that incredible performance by the 2019 college football playoff national champions, the Clemson Tigers. And with that, we head to the Peter Rook Chocolatier studio line at 205-342-9904, where we are joined by noted Bob Dylan fan. Chase Goodbread of NFL.com. What do you think, Chase? A little Dylan for you. You might this come in with shelter from the storm there by Bob <laughs> Dylan after that debacle last night. Gosh. Oh, Chase. Uh, let's start right there. Um, in terms of your expectations going into the game, as far as how it actually played out, how how far away or how near? Uh, did the events of, of last night sort of unfold to to what you expected? Well, the two areas that unfolded to my surprise both had to do with Clemson. One was their offensive line, and in particular their pass pro, and two, their secondary. Um, Both of those units for the Tigers outplayed my expectations by a pretty significant margin. I mean, obviously Alabama could barely get a hand on Trevor Lawrence. I don't think the absence of Christian Miller made all that much difference in that. Um, he, he was going to get his time and they were able to do it surprisingly without much of a running game. Uh, and then of course, uh, the the Clemson secondary was, uh, right there to make the stop with pretty much every catch that was made. They got Jerry Judy loose for the deep touchdown early in the game. Uh, but yards after catch, uh, just weren't there for Alabama's receivers for the most part. And that's, uh, that's the way, that's something that they've, kind of lived on uh, throughout the season along with a good running game. Yeah, I think you hit on it. It wasn't just the two interceptions by the Clemson defensive backs. Absolutely a good job after the catch of getting these guys on the ground uh, as quickly as possible from the Alabama receiving standpoint. Now, Chase, defensively for Alabama, Clemson converts 10 of 15 third downs. As I said earlier in the show, those 10 conversions – covered 254 yards so when Clemson was converting these thirds they weren't just dinking and dunking it to Hunter Renfro Hunter Renfro just two catches for 10 yards in the game but uh Ross and Higgins when you talk about on the outside uh these guys aren't just dynamic right Uh, they they project very well to the next level because they're 6'4 6'5 Ross is phenomenal for sure, and 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 Higgins is a heck of a player too. But but Ross is the one that I think scares you the most. And and yeah, you're right. When they converted third downs, what they were actually doing was they were picking up another first down or two with the same play. And uh, you know, it, it was it was a phenomenal performance, obviously by Trevor Lawrence. And you know, it, I mentioned the running game, Alabama. I thought did a pretty good job on ATN. I mean, look, Clemson ends up with like 135 rushing yards or something in that neighborhood, but they got 94 of them on the last drive of the game when they killed the clock in the fourth quarter. Every single yard on that last drive by Clemson came on the ground. I think they only completed one pass, and it was for zero yards. And so going into that drive, by which time the game was already decided, Clemson only had uh, 40 or so rushing yards. Uh, and yet, uh, Alabama, so I think Alabama defensively accomplished the goal for the most part of making Clemson one dimensional. Uh, but the, that, that formula kind of backfired because, because Lawrence said, well, okay, I, I don't need a running game. Watch this. The, uh, the feedback on defensive coordinator Tosh Lapoy hasn't been all that positive on the program this morning, Chase. Um, you've covered this team in the past. You know how Nick Saban works. What do you think the evaluation process for Lapoy and others on that side of the ball is going to be like maybe in the coming weeks? You know, I, I think Lapoy is certainly safe um, in part because he's such a phenomenal recruiter 
first yeah. year in with that role. And I think he did pretty well. Uh, you know, I mean, Alabama was 14 and 0 going in, and it wasn't just the offense that helped make it happen. Now, that being said, it hadn't been the best Alabama defense that we've seen by a long shot. Uh, I think unit wise, Alabama's defense was strongest on the line and, uh, maybe, maybe weakest at, at linebacker and the secondary, which I think people felt like was going to be the weak point going into the year, uh, might have outplayed the linebackers. But, uh, bottom line, Gave up more explosive plays on the year than you would expect an Alabama defense to. Clemson comes in with uh, just uh, tremendous offensive weapons and and exposed it in a pretty big way. And and so yeah, there's there's most of the drawing board activity for Alabama goes on the defensive side for sure. Uh, yeah, over those final four games of the season, season Auburn, Georgia, Oklahoma, and Clemson all hit explosive plays in the passing game of more than 40 yards in those final four contests. So Chase, let's play a game of go or stay for some of these Alabama underclassmen. You ready? Sure. Let's start on that defensive side of the ball and we'll work from the secondary to the front. Deontay Thompson, the uh, red shirt junior safety. What do you got there? I think he goes. Yeah. Yeah. He, he wasn't he the most productive guy back there over the second half of the season, but you like him to move on, huh? Well, he, I, and and if you look at what he's if you look at his career span of experience, I, I mean, he he kind of stepped in last year late and played really well. So he's probably got somewhere in the neighborhood of 18 or so games under his belt as a as a as a regular. That's not a lot. That's a pretty small sample. Uh but I think evaluation-wise for the NFL He's the kind of center fielder that teams like, a yeah. guy that's, that has shown he can play the ball in the air with a lot of instincts. Uh, it could go either way. I don't think it's a slam dunk necessarily, but but if you're pinning me down, I'll say he goes. Let's go to the linebacker level, and I'm going to give you Mac Wilson. Stay or go? Back. He comes back, yeah. I think. Yeah, uh, he, the, the, what, what a lot of progression there, I didn't think, for Mac Wilson this year. No, no, maybe even a little regression. So, yeah, he, he, I, I think he comes back. Another linebacker, Anthony Jennings, the red shirt junior. Stay or go? If I'm Jennings, I go. Uh, if for no other reason that, that I've, I've kind of been through the wars injury-wise and and uh, it's, 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 it's time to start making a few bucks. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean uh, he's, he's going to get drafted right out of the gate. Uh, he, he'd probably probably fall in the middle of Alabama's total number of prospects, but I'll say go on him. Let's go to the defensive front. Quinnen Williams, a no-brainer, I would think. What about Raquan Davis? He's a tough one. Uh, I think he should come back. I think there's a good chance he will come back. It's not going to shock me if he goes because the, the, he's got every physical trait you look for. Uh, but he, he's, he's a little bit like Mac Wilson in that this is not exactly the kind of year you want to go out on. Uh, from a from a prospect standpoint, from a production standpoint, uh, so I'll I'll say Davis stays, but that's a tough call. Offensive side of the ball, Jonah Williams, you would think makes the move. Uh, is that a slam dunk in your opinion? I think Jonah Williams goes ahead and makes the move. Yeah, there's 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 talk that he'll end up playing inside in the NFL at a guard position, although he's widely uh, highly regarded by scouts. Uh, but I don't think that's going to change. Uh, if he stays. And so uh, I think it's probably time for, for Jonah to move on. Irv Smith Jr. at the tight end position. See ya. Gone? See ya. Yeah. Oh, I mean, what? Production wise, I mean, it, yeah. it's been the kind of year you make the jump on, right? I mean, at this point, how is he as good as OJ Howard, in your opinion, Travis? Because OJ well, Howard was a mid first rounder, and, and Irv Smith at times looks a lot like him. Well, I don't know if he's the vertical guy all the time, but after the catch, I think Irv Smith Jr. shocked a lot of people uh, this year with his ability to make people miss in, in yards after catch. Uh, and let's wrap it up with Josh Jacobs. Uh, what do you think there? Another tough one. I'll say he goes. Uh, that running back position is sticky. It's actually the one position where Nick Saban will kind of, 
give his blessing to a guy who's not projected as a first round pick. Uh, Eddie Lacy comes to mind in that regard. Uh, and, and, and Jacobs, uh, uh, Jacobs is ready. I, I mean, you know, you, you he brings it all to the table. Uh, I, I think he, I think he probably goes, but uh, and and maybe the best, maybe the best NFL back of anybody on Alabama's roster right now would would shock me at all. I mean, he, he brings everything. Well, there you go, Chase Goodbread of NFL.com and the Crimson Cover Television Program, which you can see each and every Friday night on VUA channel 23 6 30 p.m the talking tide podcast as well with yours truly chase thanks a lot for checking in my man know you're busy look forward to catching up with you again real soon enjoyed it